Welcome to Bitter Alley Brewing. Yes, this is part two of the Irish Extra Stout, where we compared two white lab yeasts, and I know you're just staring at that going, what the hell happened? I'm gonna explain, but before we do, don't forget to like, subscribe, keep sharing, definitely appreciate the sharing. You might wanna just share this one just for fun, you know? Say, hey, check out what happens when you do X. Well, needless to say, if this is salvageable, which we'll know during the taste test, this is the Irish extra stout on both sides. The difference is, is this is British White Lab 002. We also had another problem you're not viewing right now. This was what we did last year, which was the British extra dry 007. Well, my 007, I couldn't score some fresh and my year old, which had been redone at least once, maybe twice, but probably only once, just never kicked off. So I had to get into a backup plan. My backup plan was White Labs, Irish 004, which came out amazing in the Red Rye IPA, if you haven't, or Red Rye, Irish Red Rye, there we go. I can't even speak, I'm like heat emitting from here. And yeah, you, now you're starting to catch a picture there. But um, so we have 004 and 002 that we're gonna be comparing if the heat didn't destroy them. What happened? What happened? And how am I going to recover? I've got that under plans too, or I got plans for that. When I pulled the red ales out of the fermenter, I always keep my temperature probe right on the very top of whatever fermentation vessel is inside my fermenter chamber, right on the top. So it kind of keeps the ambient air right where it needs to be. I don't, I don't have it floating up above. I don't tape to the side. I want it somewhere near the center of whatever I have in there fermenting so that I know. And if it's just one item and it's stuck right to the top edge of one of the items, it fell outside, which was okay because, you know, it really wasn't that cold outside of the fermentation chamber, chamber. And it was probably set to about 68, maybe 72. Sometimes I ramp it up and I think I did, but it's all good. Not a big deal. Temperature of the garage was probably around that time, that temperature most of the time. <sighs> last night, <clears throat> yeah, last night we got a really cold freeze and that garage is ice cold. Well, the little thermostat is sitting out there reading 58 degrees, or before that it was probably colder. It was probably 30 or 40 degrees. So inside my fermentation chamber, it's thinking, hey, we're not up around the high 60s or low 70s and we need to get this temperature up. Yeah, this poor guy was right, you know, within relative distance to the heater compared to this one. This one's just as hot. It just didn't do what this did which kind of tells me there's some differences in the plastic because this should have deformed a little bit and it didn't. This deformed a lot. It got to 147 degrees Fahrenheit, according to my tilt, because my tilt hydrometers are in both of these reading the temperatures. This one was at 143, I believe. This one was 147, I'll put that up somewhere. The final gravities might've been off a little. I had some readings of that before it went crazy like this. So this melted. It's crazy hot. I'm afraid it's gonna start sucking air oxygen in as it cools, which it should. It needs air to maybe expand. I don't think it's gonna expand much. Um, yeah, I'm terrified. So let's transfer some beer and we'll go from there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this on the nozzle, put this on the keg, but there's some oxygen in this too. So what I'm gonna do is I already pressurized the keg I made sure to drop in a one third of a teaspoon of gelatin. It's only three gallons, three gallons, so separate kegs, but one third of a teaspoon. And then I'm gonna do, I did one third cup of water every 10 seconds until it dissolved. I poured it in the keg, I pressurized the keg, I released this O2. It's now under pressure. So I'm gonna put this side on first. It'll blow air out this, and then I'll put that on and just let the liquid go. I'll stick this little bubbler on there, you know, just let the air flow out the other side since there's no pressure. And we're doing gravity. Yeah, I'm terrified. I'm hoping, I'm just crossing my fingers, it will still taste amazing. Maybe we're onto something new, you know, take it from the 60s and just let it ride. <laughs> so, crossing my fingers. Worst case, uh, yeah, it'd be bad, but it is what it is. I'm gonna transfer the beer. Okay, I'm a little off camera here. I have to have it down here on the bottom. I don't have a lot of space in this place and I don't really wanna move that around too much. So I'm gonna let you hear it and then I'll just transfer it and we'll go from there. And I sprayed the hell out of these with star sand. There you go, hear the air going out?
And I sprayed star sand up in there. I've been going nuts with the star sand. Actually, you can still see some moisture back there. Okay, let's get this bad boy on here. And for anybody who doesn't do a gravity transfer like this, as soon as I start this, it's gonna suck. And I have star sand and everything in here, so it's gonna pull some O2 on top, but that's okay. We'll be fine. CO2 is heavier than O2, it'll all be good. And you can watch the flow. And there we go. And I'm not worried about the air mixing in there because that's all CO2. My hose is a little long, it is what it is. I didn't want to cut it because I'm using it for something else. And there we go, it's flowing. Okay, it's gonna take a few minutes and we'll jump from there. Okay, this is the other one that's still really hot. This is supposed to be White Lab 007 English Dry Ale Yeast, but it is Irish 004 because my 07 wasn't fresh and it looked good in the starter, but it just, after about day and a half, it wasn't doing anything and I've researched and no one reported ever having lag with that yeast. So I'm like, you know what? We're gonna have to pitch 004 and rock on. We did, and then we had our heat problem. I'm gonna move it. You've probably seen this little powered transfer method before. Essentially, what I'm gonna use is a wand, a transfer pump, and we're gonna transfer hot water, I've already star sand the hell out of this, over to here so we get the entire tube full of water. Then I'm gonna stick it in the beer. It's gonna transfer beer, and just as the beer goes to hit here, I'm gonna move it to our final resting place, which is a five gallon corny keg, pre-purged. And we're only transferring three gallons. There's three gallons here. Could only be three gallons here, but it's okay. I'm not worried about that overflowing because three goes into five, even if it was a little more, a little less, it's all good. So let me get my power connected here because that's one issue. I'm already seeing it won't reach. So I need to get an extension cord. <laughs> problems, problems, problems. Some of you may notice that if you have this transfer pump, you have a brick and you don't have this little thing. You actually have a brick with another cord. Yeah, I dropped mine in water one time and I thought it was fried, so I ordered two of these. And it's kind of cool that you have this transfer pump. Get it up and out of the way. It's got a little plug here, so you can unplug it, plug it back in. And it allowed me to buy some of these and use these instead. The other piece does work, I don't know where it is. This is just more convenient than having extra cords. So I go with this. I'll speed part of this up, of course. You ever lose a liquid disconnect and not know where you put it? That would be me. Hopefully that's snug since I forgot my pliers. Okay, let's find the in. It's under pressure. Okay, here we go for the liquid. Okay, and now for the move. Okay, here we go. Start pumping. We have stout in the line. Pull it off. Spin the keg around the right direction. Put it on. And I Always forget about. Mm. I hate when it does that. We gotta pick this up. And we'll put this at an angle. There we go. And let's let some gas out. Go over here. Hopefully that keeps working. I can't get it to snap. Here we go. Okay. 
stopped it before the air got in, basically. Mm. <sighs> yeah, I did put a little bit of gelatin in here. I know it's clear as night. Get it? Stout, dark. Um, the reason I did it is supposedly it can pull some of the particulates out and I just don't want anything floating around trying to help with the heat issue. Anything I can do to save the beer and make sure it comes out tasting great. So I'm gonna purge this just to make sure there's no O2 in there. Cold crash it, pack it down with some serious CO2, shake the living hell out of it, and hopefully have it ready within a few days so that we can do a taste testing. <sighs> Things happen. So yeah, this fermenter is toast. I'm very excited. Tomorrow I have a couple of new fermenters and new keg and some other cool stuff coming tomorrow. Very excited. <clears throat> I know this is kind of a teaser to let you know, you know, what happens when you ferment something up to 147 degrees Fahrenheit. So definitely check out the last video, which will be out tomorrow. And that's on the actual taste testing. And that's on both the O2 or 002 and the 004 White Labs. Also on Monday, check it out, but um, got a big, big White Labs, cool giveaway, some free yeast, all kinds of cool stuff going on on Monday. Thank you again for joining us here at Bitter Reality Brewing. Don't forget, like, subscribe, keep sharing, definitely sharing. I appreciate that massively. Thank you again.